Hey guys, it's Barrett. This is part two, and we are continuing to build the Stone Elf, which is the unofficial name <laughs> of this, it might change. It's a goddess of some sort, and it's crazy, which is typical of my compositions and artwork. It's all over the place. That's why I like surrealism. So right now I'm using a 3D plugin called Pixel Squid 360. I use them a lot. I use it to put characters or objects that take way too long to build or render myself it's so much faster and you can rotate it in 3d space and then you can see what happens it's really nice um, i'm building a little i guess a guy exploring the temple and part of this i do this a lot in my artwork it's because i want the viewer of the artwork to almost imagine themselves as this person and it gives it a lot more personal touch and emotion to the artwork and it's almost like uh, having a dream. And this is like a dream that you're experiencing. And this is you walking through this scene. And um, it's pretty cool. It gives you a little more interest in general. So right now I'm working in a smart object. And if you're not familiar with Photoshop, a smart object is relatively new. It's not brand new, but basically they're just um, more in-depth group layers. So you can put all your layers into a smart object and then you can kind of free up your layer palette on the right, free it up because mine's messy. So the more smart objects, the better. The only downside of smart objects is it kind of does slow down the overall workflow, like processing power on the computer. So I don't use them too much. I use them and then I'll flatten them once I'm kind of like, okay, this is good. I'm going to keep this. So flattening means you basically take out all the layers and you turn it into a solid picture. No more layers, no more chance to edit and move things around if you're not familiar with Photoshop. So uh, right now I'm building more structure into her arms. I'm considering what to do next with the arms or just leave them as they are. Now I'm going into the neck. And what you saw right there was, a, it's called a puppet warp. And I had to use it in a different window because for some reason this, I guess the file size is so huge on this that it wouldn't work. But puppet warp is probably one of the best um, innovations Photoshop has made in my opinion since the last couple um, integrations of Photoshop. I use it a lot. Um, warp dis Distort, which is the mesh you'll see me use, that's okay. And I'm, recently they added a, um, a way to create a mesh, which means you can create different points and rotate it, which is really nice, but it's still not as good as Puppet Warp. And uh, right now I am deciding, what am I gonna do with this little guy? Is he gonna be like climbing the mountain? in the middle of her chest looking at a hole there or is it is he going to be somewhere else so you'll see i kind of moved him I'll, I'll hide layers and i'll come back to him later now i'm kind of playing with the face playing with the overall lighting seeing if i want to go with a dark silhouette or maybe go with a colored um, human face i might do a face like from a statue so she looks more like a rock like a an actual statue of a deity a goddess and then I didn't like the hair there, so now I'm kind of moving the boulders around, trying to make them fit, doing more with the arm here. And uh, this is part of the process, you know, it takes time. People think it's a one-click filter sometimes. Uh, you'll see a lot of uh, collage, so-called collage art on there, and people literally just two, throw two pictures together and th run one filter on it and say, look at my artwork, and whatever, you know, it could be okay, but. And my, I, I like to really work on my pieces. I, I want people to fall in love with the, all the details and, and put themselves into the scene. And that's probably my primary objective is not only to create, but to have inspire other people who are looking to create in their own mind. Like maybe you look at this and you're like, wow, I could, maybe I could think of something similar to that or maybe I can envision myself in that and write a short story or write a poem or write some music or just go outside and look at nature differently that's that's really my goal it's fun for me too of course and uh, now you'll see I'm changing my idea here with the tree roots at the bottom I really like this idea of doing a perspective which is a little unusual because most of my artworks I just do a, a front obvious thing 
at one perspective, but in this case, I'm thinking maybe I'll build a scene out of this. Maybe I'll have somebody walking in on a, on a river, finding this, stumbling upon this giant statue of this woman. And it actually worked out really nicely. I'm gonna probably completely hide those tree roots or I'll do something else with them later. But here you'll see I'm putting in that river, two rivers, two different sides. They both feed into that waterfall and you could literally stand on that rock right in front of you at the bottom and just look up and see everything. And that's kind of the idea. I may even do like a fisheye lens, kind of wide angle lens distortion at the end to make it feel even more like you're really looking up at her. So we'll see, that might be kind of unique. And the paper background may stay there, it may not. At this point, I may just add like a big forest or sky background and just make a full scene out of it, which is a little deviation from what I normally do. But hey, that's why it's fun. I, I like doing things differently each time. I try to keep my style, but also be fun and experiment. Thanks for watching, and I really appreciate everybody's support buying artwork over the years. I'll do more videos like this, and I will see you next time. Stay safe, everyone.